As stated in other videos, HeroScape was a game that started in 2004, was produced until 2010, and is on a hiatus until Renegade Game Studios picks it up and re-releases it in 2024. In addition to figures and Master Set expansions, there were also terrain expansions like this one, The Road to the Forgotten Forest. It added some new rules and new expansion possibilities to the game and the maps. One of the terrain expansions for HeroScape was Road to the Forgotten Forest, which introduced road tiles, stone walls, and evergreen trees. Let's go over the rules and explain how to use these in your HeroScape game. The following rules for the road tiles apply both in the basic and the master game. Moving on road spaces. When moving your figures on road spaces, count each space as a normal space. However, if your figure's entire move consists of road spaces, including the starting space, you may add an additional three spaces for your figure's move. The three additional spaces must also be on road spaces. Let's go through an example of that. Finn the Viking Champion's normal move is five. However, Finn's entire move here is going to be on road spaces, so we can add the three from the road tiles and move a total of eight spaces. One, two, three for the side, four, five, six, seven, eight. The following rules for the stone walls apply in both the basic game and the master game as well, with some exceptions being the falling and engagement rules are only used in the master game. In building with a stone wall, a stone wall must be placed on the battlefield with each of the eight connecting faces attached to hex tiles. This stone wall is placed correctly because all eight connecting faces are attached to hex tiles. This stone wall is placed incorrectly because a connecting face is not attached. Moving over stone walls. Figures may move over stone walls. When moving over a stone wall, count the height of the stone wall as spaces. The height of the inside of the wall, the side connected to the tile, is 2. The height on the outside of the wall, the side not connected to a tile, is 3. In this example, Finn, again with a movement of 5, has a move over the wall, and the inside wall costs 2 movement spaces to move over because it has a height of 2. So it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Moving over an outside wall costs 3 movement because of the size of the wall from the outside. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Moving over an elevated outside wall. When a figure moves over an elevated outside wall, be sure to count the height of the wall and the nearby support tiles. Using this Venok Viper with a movement of 7, let's take a look at this. Be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And it had started here, and you count the side support plus the 3 of the wall. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. A figure cannot move over a stone wall if it cannot move enough spaces to get to an empty space on the other side. Now we're going to go over falling over a stone wall. To determine if a figure is considered falling after moving over a stone wall, measure its fall from the top of the stone wall. And remember, falling is when a figure moves down to a much lower level. It may get wounded. This rule does not apply if a figure drops onto a water space. A figure can fall onto a water space from any level, and a fall is defined as follows. If the drop is equal to or more than the figure's height, you must roll one combat die after moving to see if it's wounded. And again, a major fall is if the drop is 10 levels more than the figure's height, you must roll two additional dice for a total of three dice. For each skull you roll, add a wound marker to that figure's army card. And lastly, an extreme fall is if the drop is 20 levels or more than the figure's height, you must roll the 20-sided die. If you roll a 19 or 20, you survive without taking any falling damage. If you roll a 1 to 18, your figure is destroyed. So, if this Venok Viper, which is a medium 5, was to move over this wall, it is 9 height from here to here. Because you count the sides over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 2 for the inside wall would make it 9. So it would, indeed, take a falling damage roll. He's dead. But now let's say the Venok Viper wants to jump over the wall for its movement into the water where it's safe. That'd be one, two, three, 
and it would have to stop immediately if you were playing the basic game. Going back to special powers, the Venok Vipers have Slither. They do not have to stop their movement when entering water spaces. Four, five, six, seven. That's why the Master game is so much fun! You can do more stuff. Now we're going to go over engagement. When a stone wall is between two figures, both figures' heights must be higher than the stone wall is positioned on the battlefield to be engaged. If one or both of the figures are equal to or are below the stone wall, they are not engaged. And again, the stone wall has a height of two on the inside and three from the outside. In this example, this will be Blade Grut 1, this will be Blade Grut 2. Blade Grut 1 is engaged with Vin, Blade Grut 2 is not engaged with Vin, because Blade Grut 2 has a height of 4 and the stone wall, as positioned on this battlefield, has a total height of 4. Now let's talk line of sight marks. Line of sight marks are the red markings on the tops of the stone walls used only for ranged attacks. They are used for line of sight only when attacking from the inside of a stone wall. A figure next to a line of sight mark may use this mark instead of his or her target point. It is the equivalent of leaning over the wall to target an opponent. To use a line of sight mark, choose a line of sight mark that is next to the space your figure is on. Then, target your opponent by lining up the line of sight mark at the outside edge of the wall to your target. If there is a clear line of sight, you may use this range attack. Let's take a look at this blade grut in an example. Blade Grut is taking shelter underneath the bridge edge, and Savaris, normally using his target point, which is the green dot on his army card, can only look in a straight line towards a target, so he cannot see the Blade Grut down below. However, when Savaris uses the line of sight mark on the stone wall, which is the red line, it is the equivalent of leaning over the wall, so we look right here, and you can indeed see the Blade Grut and he is going to be probably killed. Let's see how this attack would play out. A Blade Grut has a defense of 2, and Savaris would be attacking here from technically a height of 7. So the height 4 of the Blade Grut does not give extra height advantage to Savaris. However, Savaris does have height advantage. And again, height advantage is if the base of one figure is higher than the base of the other figure, no matter their actual size or height, the higher figure has height advantage and rolls one extra die. This applies to defense as well. If the base of the higher figure is 10 or more levels higher than the height of the lower figure, then the higher figure rolls two extra dice, again applying to defense. When figures have height advantage, remember that glyphs and water spaces do not add height to the space they are on. So let's take a look at Savaris here, who's about to attack that grut. He has an attack of three normally, so with the height advantage, he'll roll four. So that's two, and the blade grut would be dead. If he survived by some miracle in the master game rules, Savaris also has double attack, and since it is not a special attack, he would still get height advantage for a second attack because he may attack one additional time. And normal attacks get the height advantage. Evergreen Trees. The following rules for Evergreen Trees apply both in the basic game and the master game. Evergreen trees may be placed onto any space where they fit. You may not place them on a space that does not have a hex interlock. For example, you cannot place trees on water because the water tiles do not have hex interlock. Four of the evergreen trees in this set that came out occupy a single hex and one occupies four hexes. Moving around evergreen trees. Figures are not allowed to move through any spaces that are occupied by trees. Figures cannot move through any of the four spaces occupied by the larger evergreen tree. Line of Sight. All evergreen trees block line of sight. Long range attacks can only be used when a clear line of sight is available between evergreen trees. In this example, Savars can easily see the blade grut between the trees. There is a small area here, but Savaris can see the blade grut between the trees. And those are the rules added in the terrain expansion Road to the Forgotten Forest that explain how to use road tiles, evergreen trees, and stone walls.